I am Jorn Dyerberg, a Dane, a medical doctor, and have had the uh, luck to introduce to the community, to the medical society, to the science, the concept of omega-3 fatty acids. It was way back in 68. There was a lead paper in this Danish medical journal focusing in on the health aspects of Greenlanders. And one of the strange things was that they had a low incident of coronaries, a very low incident of coronary heart disease, in spite of their traditional diet, which was based on fatty fish and seal, which is a fatty animal. And we knew at that time that high fat intake was associated to a high risk of coronaries. How come that our co-citizens, the Eskimos, the Inuit, had a high fat, fat diet and a low incidence? So we said, we will go to Green. We, we have to go to Greenland and, and do examination of the blood of Eskimos to see how come that they, they don't have coronaries. They, they should have a high cholesterol. Maybe they don't have. Let's go up there. And we managed to come up there and we managed to collect blood from 130 Eskimos living from seal and fish and their wives. In, in remote settlements and the northeastern part of, of Greenland. And that blood we brought back home and we analyzed it. I did the lipoproteins up there and we presented the results. And this was that we had seen they had low blood cholesterol, but not that much lower, so there must be an extra explanation. I had a gas chromatograph that could do fatty acid analysis. And we simply said, we have 130 samples of Eskimos. No one will ever collect 130 fasting samples of blood from Eskimos living from seal and whale and fish. Let's do fatty acids and publish it because sometimes someone will say, that now we have the data. And then we started a two-year uh, gas chromatic analysis uh, on this old machinery and found two new fatty acids we haven't seen before. And then came some new results that, get, that gave a Nobel Prize. Uh, two Swedes and, and, and an, uh, an Englishman found out that from omega-6 fatty acids there could be formed in our body prostaglandins that regulates a lot of things, but amongst them also the blood thrombotic phenomenon. When, when you cut a vessel, the blood plates stick together and make a tiny thrombus, and this is initiated or promoted by these uh, prostaglandins from omega-6 fatty acids. And we suddenly got the idea that what if that from our, uh, our omega-3 fatty acids that nobody cared about or knew about for that side, icosapentaenoic acid could be made prostaglandin that didn't favor the clotting that much. That would mean two things. The Eskimos would have a certain bleeding tendency. If they cut themselves, they would bleed longer. But second, they wouldn't make blood clots that easy. And you know a heart attack or a coronary is a blood clot in a coronary artery. So we did some experiments, found out that this icosapentaenoic acid actually could dampen the blood clotting tendency and we went up there and measured bleeding time by making tiny cuts and measuring how long uh, you put a stasis on the arm and cuts and measure how long it bleeds until it, it stopped bleeding. And in Danes it was four minutes and in, in Greenland it was eight. And they had a high level of EPA and we published that and this was the birth of the omega-3 story. In short terms, the story of how omega-3 was introduced to the public, to the industry, uh, to the medical society and to science.